In this lesson, we'll take a look at solving quadratics using the square root method. And in our next video, we'll look at the quadratic formula for solving. Uh, we previously learned four different ways, or we will learn four different ways to solve quadratic equations this year, including factoring, something we covered last unit, square root method, quadratic formula, and completing the square. Remember that solutions are where the graph of the equation will cross the x-axis. We looked at graphing quadratics in our last video, and we noticed that the solutions are where we have x-intercepts. They're also called the roots and the zeros. We also want to remember that a square root of a number can be positive or negative. For example, the square root of 16 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16 but also negative 4, because negative 4 times 4 equals 16. Let's take a look at the square root method in more detail. This method can only be used when we have a quadratic formula in the form of ax squared plus c equals 0. The middle term, that x term, is missing here. Our steps to solve using the square root method. If the equation is in the correct form, maybe it says y equals or f of x equals, we want to set our equation equal to zero. If it is, then we're good. We're going to isolate the squared term on one side of the equation, take the square root of both terms on both sides of the equation. Remember that when we take the square root, we're going to have two possible answers, that plus and minus. And then we make sure our solutions are in simplest radical form if necessary. Let's take a look at our first example. Again, we want our equation to be in the form of ax squared plus c equals 0. Okay, so we don't quite have that. We're going to go ahead and set our equation equal to zero. So I'm going to take a look at the first example, which means I'm going to subtract 9 on both sides. I'll get my x squared minus 16 equals zero. And now we're going to go ahead and set it equal to the x squared. So add 16 on both sides. Maybe we could have just added 7 to both sides and taken care of it that way. Our last step is to take the square root of both sides, and we'll get x. And on the other side, the square root of 16 is 4, but it's also negative 4. So we get two solutions this way. And if we were to put this on the graph, we'll see that that's where our uh, parabola crosses the x-axis. All right, next one. I have a coefficient of y squared. I'm actually going to divide by 11 everywhere. We'll get y squared equals 1. Take the square root of both sides, and we'll get our y equaling a 1, but also negative 1. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add 10 to both sides. And I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. Now I can take the square root. And I'll get x equals the square root of 5. It's going to be plus or minus, so you can actually write that this way, plus minus the square root of 5. That's showing you both of the answers. If you're not sure about that, you can always write the square root of 5 and the opposite of the square root of 5 equals x. So you can write it either way. All right, let's go ahead and add 14 to both sides. And we'll take the square root. These are great because we have perfect squares, so it's a little bit easier to see what your answers are. This one will be plus or 
or minus 3. Ooh, take a look at that middle one. Our step here is going to be to divide by 3 on both sides, getting rid of that 3 on the outside. Cross out my 3s. I'm left with x plus 3 in parentheses squared equals, let's see, 75 divided by 3 is 25. Now I know I have a binomial in that square. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. We'll get x plus 3 equals the square root of 25 is 5. Or it could be minus 5. I'm going to write down two equations for that one. And then continue to solve. I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides. We'll get an x of 2. And we're going to subtract 3 on both sides. And we'll get an x of negative 8. So this one had two answers. And we really had to go a little bit further to get there. We'll take a look at our very last one here. It says f of x. That's okay. That's really, we can replace that with 0. I'm going to go ahead and move my 169 to the other side. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 9. So we have negative 169 divided by 9. Oh, that's a decimal. So we have a negative divided by negative I know is a positive. So let's leave it like this, 169 over 9, and set it equal to m squared. We're going to take the square root of both sides. Now this actually turns out quite nice because 169 is a perfect square. So you can take the square root of the top. You can also take the square root of the bottom. And we'll get our answer. We have several more practice problems, so go ahead and pause your video and try practicing and then come back and see how you did. Before we go on to check our answers, I want to go back to the last um, example problem that we did together. We had to take the square root of 169 over 9, which we can break up into two radicals. Um, and we should still be getting two answers here, plus or minus 13 over 3. I neglected to mention that before. All right, take a look at your work here. The top row wasn't too bad. The bottom row got a little bit, a little bit sketchy there. So. Our top row, our two answers are 5 and negative 1. x equals 7 and negative 7. And then x equals just plus or minus the square root of 7. As we move on to that bottom row, we had a little bit more to do. On that bottom row. Add 1 to both sides, we'll get 121 over 36 when we divide by 36. Then we have to take the square root. The square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 36 is 6. And again, I've got that plus minus sign out in front. Uh, middle bottom row, we divide by 3 first. And then we take the square root of that binomial and the square of 6. We'll get x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Then we subtract 4 on both sides, and we'll just end up with x equals the square root of 6 minus 4, or negative square root of 6 minus 4. You could plug it in and get the decimal, or you could leave it like that. It'll depend on what the directions ask you for. They might ask you to round it to the nearest hundredth. Our last one was a little more complicated than expected, I think. We're going to add 12 to both sides and then have to divide by 5. Here we have 12 over 5 equals y squared. We take the square root of both sides. Now, I did a lot of work at the end here because I don't know if you remembered this. 
when you break your fraction into two radicals, top and bottom, you can't have a radical in the denominator. I simplified the square root of 12 to be 2 root 3. And then I had to multiply it by that denominator, top and bottom, to rationalize. Multiply by radical 5 over radical 5. We'll get 2 radical 15 over radical 25. That radical 25 is 5. Then you take the square root. But again, we need two answers here. We need a plus minus 2 radical 5. Uh, 2 radical 15 over 5. These bottom ones were definitely more complicated than the top. Please make sure you read your directions. It might say... Um, Give your answer in simplest radical form. It might say give your answer as a decimal. So once you get as simplified as you can, you put it into your calculator, your decimals calculator, and get your answer rounded to digits. Check out our next video when we start using the quadratic formula to solve quadratic um, functions.